Now I'm gonna talk about the micrometer right here. This is the micrometer. This was uh, invented by Mr. Micrometer, and then he and, and this tells you what uh, how big strings are and stuff like that, and how big uh, guitar players' egos are. So if you look at that really close, this is this is the guitar player's talent, and then if you could open this thing up, if you could open this up from here to the sun, that's the guitar player's ego, <laughs> and he's right here. And I'm not lying, all right? I think it stems from the devil or something like that. I'm, I'm pretty sure the devil was a, he was quite the conniver and he was really full of himself. And he played the, what did he play? Fiddle. The, the fiddle or the, the, I think he played just about everything. He was a musician, from what I understand. And he was God's right hand man. And it was like one third of the angels. Right? Am I right? One third of the angels in heaven went to the devil, went the, with the devil. Man, that's a lot. So he is a power, powerful guy, and we'll be talking about him a little bit today. For what reason, I don't know. It just popped into my head when, I, when, I opened, when the camera went on. But anyway, uh, shouts out to BC. All right, now what else am I going to say? Uh, yeah, today we got two guests on the show. Uh, our first guest is... What's your first name again? Malachi. Malachi. Yeah. Oh man, that's a cool name, man. Okay. That's a cool name. It's in the uh, it's in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a book in the Bible. It's pretty cool. I don't know nothing about that book. All right, now what do we got? Also, we have uh, we have uh, one of my students' mothers here, and we have one of my students, my, my youngest student, who's actually taking lessons from our best teacher, who is Jeff Holt who you've seen Danny hold on our show a couple times. It's Jeff is his brother! <laughs> well, and Danny's a good fella. Danny's other brother, God rest his soul, passed away, and his sister too, and things are tough all over, but you know, when you die, you go to heaven, and that's what's, it's all there is to it. Whether you're a good person or a bad person, you go to heaven. In my book, I know it's pretty true. Uh, like my son told me, the good part of you goes to heaven, and the bad part of you goes to hell. But if there's no good part of you, that's, you know, that's your problem. You gotta create some good part of you and then you will go to heaven. So anyone that, that's hearing my voice right now, that's the truth. If you are, have anything good in you, that part of you is going to heaven. So develop that good if you don't have any now and try to get as much up there as possible. All right, now let's get on with the show. Let's go, let's go back here. All right, we're working on stuff today. Uh, Rick's working on this amplifier, and he's working hard. And this thing right here, this thing is how we talk to aliens. Hey. This thing is how we talk to aliens, and we talk to aliens a lot because we're talking on, on channel 38, goes through the air, and not a lot of people know this, but television signals go forever. They don't stop. They are they are they have good, some sort of gamma ray in it. Am I right? Some sort of super gamma, right? There you go. Right, Oscar? Yep, yep. Super gammas? <laughs> <laughs> Oscar should know because he's in the television business and he knows all about these gamma rays. He, they're dangerous, right? Right. Uh, they are, correct? They are. If you had a ga if you guys went on top of the TV40, if I were to go on top of it, right, to try to signal aliens, and I put my head right on the end of it, right, what would that do to me? It would hurt, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know if it could do much, but anyway. Yeah. It wouldn't do much to me. If I, the normal person, it would destroy. All right, so this is how we do it. You know, this is how we do it. This thing right here, this is this, especially this part right here. See what it says? Good. That's when you're talking to good aliens. Bad, bad aliens. So one or the other. We don't care because uh, it doesn't matter to us. All right, so watch out. This is our uh, repair guy right here, Rick Eller. Say hi, Rick. Hello. And uh, God bless you. God bless you. You can handle 50 cents, man. All I got to say is, I had some Cokes, you know, I had some Cokes here for sale at, at, at a dollar and nobody paid for them. And then I, I shut it down to 50 cents and, do you guys hear anything in there? No. And so now we got all these Diet Cokes because that's all we have left in this one Coke. So come on, you can handle 50 cents, man. Hopefully next week we're gonna have some change in here and some Cokes, okay? All right, come on back here. 
into the Jimi Hendrix room. Our, our second guest is going to be Travis. Say hi, Travis. Hi. You're going to be on television. Yeah. All right. And this is our green room. This is actually uh, the, the beginnings of our show. Everybody's got to know that from now on, we're filming at 5 o'clock every Saturday down here at the show. We're going to have this place filled up with people, have a studio audience or something like that. Maybe we'll have to rent a theater someday. Wouldn't that be great? Bravo. Have our own show. But you're invited down here at Saturdays at 5 o'clock for the live filming of this show. And we're taking phone numbers. We're taking phone calls, too. So the number is 737-7625 or 737-ROCK! ROCK! 737-ROCK. And then, uh, also, I want you to write in to me, too, if you don't have a phone, and you know who I'm talking about, people without phones, that can see me on television, including aliens. I'm taking, I need some feedback from the people out there so I know that I'm spending good money on my show, because we can barely make ends meet around here. I'm joking, we're doing all right. It's just that the state of Michigan takes so damn much money. If you mess up, don't mess up, all right? You guys already know that now we're um, talking to BC. But don't mess up with the state of Michigan on any level. Especially if you owe them money, tax money, pay them. ASAP. That's all I got to tell you. And a small businessman, you know what I'm talking about. All right, what else? Yeah, address. 3100A Henry Street. Muskegon, Michigan, 49441. And once again, that number is 737-7625 with a 231 prefix. 231-737-7625. Call me Saturdays at 5 o'clock. We need feedback. We want to know if we're reaching people. All right, and one more that's, if you have a, a computer and you'd like to email me, the email is Carter's guitars at yahoo.com carter's guitars at yahoo.com we're really fixing up the room now this is the girls room notice we got the nice little cute couple hugging and uh, this is uh, one of my Things, some of the artwork that I did when I was a kid in high school. That's Grover Washington Jr., the greatest saxophone player of all times, in my humble opinion. The Malachi. What do you think of Grover Washington Jr.? I got to agree with you. One of the best uh, saxophone players that um, blowed into you? that sax. I know. I think, I really, I don't know if I know anybody. Yeah, I know they talk about Coltrane, but... And maybe they even talk about Kenny G. <laughs> <laughs> but Grover Washington Jr., God rest his soul, he has died, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Didn't he just die? Pretty sure he just died. I know Johnny Cash is dead. Yeah, Grover Washington Jr. is dead too, and I'm going to be dead pretty soon too. I can't believe how long I've been alive. Now, these are weighted keys, so this piano has weighted keys just like a regular piano. So this is your piano room now, all right? Now let's get to our interview. You ready? I'm ready. All right, so I, today we're gonna be talking to uh, Malachi. And uh, how you doing, Malachi? Real good, you? Very good. All right. And we're gonna be talking about saxophones. And uh, the saxophones, I, I think we talked about them last week or tonight. We're gonna be talking about them tonight on the television show because we're, we're doing the show on Saturdays, and it's also airing on Saturdays at 10 o'clock. So we're talking about last week's show. I believe last week's show we started with them with saxophones, right? Is that right? Right. Cool. So last week's show we talked about saxophones, 
And those saxophones were the new saxophones that I'm going to be getting and I'm going to be offering to the people at wholesale prices to the public. I'm talking, really. Wholesale prices. So you're doing the public a favor. I'm doing the public a favor that would be considered by some to be honorary and, and steadfast and forthright. All right? Because, and the reason why am I doing that? To make money. Right? Because I must be getting them off with darn cheap. And I am. And I am getting a quality uh, saxophone, though, that we're going to talk about. We're going to compare because they, I'm still waiting for them. They're over at FedEx right now. We're not going to get them. I think I'm going to take them. I'm going to have them on your show Tuesday night. Oh, great. Okay. And now I'm going to bring a saxophone player down there or two and have them squawk on it and tell them what they talk about. Okay. okay? Now, another thing I'm going to talk about saxophones is something that was called to my attention just the other day is that you can have an expensive saxophone and a cheap reed, okay? Or you can have a cheap saxophone with an expensive reed, okay? Is my, am I right there? Yep. Reeds are different, cost different amounts of money. Thank just God. like there are reeds out in the swamp, right? And there are reeds that cost $75 for a little three of them in a little thing, right? I mean, you can pretty much make a reed if you want to out of a piece of wood, couldn't you? Couldn't you just find oh, a piece yeah. of wood and go, I got no reeds, slam. Yeah, but you gotta be like Jed Clampett. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be Jed Clampett, you gotta be whittling right. <laughs> whittling down. Yeah. You gotta be whittling down. But my point is is that there are different priced reeds for different saxophones. As well right? as the mouthpieces. As well as guitars have different priced pickups you know, inside them. Like, you can take a cheap guitar and put a really fancy pickup in it, and a friend of mine, God rest his soul, and he knows who I'm talking about, Alfonso Loera, his number one axe was a Fender Squire guitar that he had really expensive EMG pickups in, right? Okay. And then he changed the tuners out too, but the wood was this cheap guitar. Now, what I'm talking about here is people that have been scamming all the people in the United States and all throughout the world with this school music program, all right? Now, I'm going to be the new school music program, and my school music program is going to create musicians, not make people go broke. Can you be the director of the school music program? I, I would like to be, I'm not, I couldn't, I couldn't direct the school music program. I'm saying the director, you know, just entitled. I would like to actually what I'm doing is running for the president of the United States. Okay. Did you know that? No, I didn't. That's what I want to do is I'm running for president of the United States and I've already got one guy that's gonna vote for me. All right. Two now. Two? Two. All right. All right. <laughs> two, baby. <laughs> Two's better than zip. I had zip yesterday, today I got two. Okay. How about you, Oscar? You wanna vote for me? Yeah, three. Okay, three. All right. Phone's okay. ringing off the hook. So yeah, well it's good. <laughs> if anybody calls, this is a television show, we wanna get it done. All right, now, I've got three people voting for me for president, because I really can't be a director of any musical school program because I, I don't have that kind of patience. But I could be the, the president, okay. because he, he gets to go on vacation like once a month, right? Or, or twice a month. And then every once in a while, or usually all the time, he likes to take like four or five week or six week vacations. Yeah. I'm down with that. <laughs> and also, I would uh, I'd solve all the world's problems, too. Okay, because the leader of the free world should be able to solve all the world's problems in today's world with all of our advanced civilization and our advanced technologies and the internet and people like me who have television shows who can talk to 200,000 people in one night, you know, and uh, there's got to be some sort of logic in the world. So I'm voting for, hey, how about you, Rick? Is the little student done? Was I'm waiting for him right now. I'm going to do him right now. Okay. Would you vote for me for president? Why, sure. All right, good. There's, there's four. All right, now let's go. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for Chris Travis Doobie as he approaches the stage. Travis Stewie, tip for Travis Doobie. All right, Travis. You're actually my sec third interview subject that I'm going to interview. Yes. You are the third one. Because I've really only, only well, I guess that's four, because I, did, I didn't really sit down with Danny Holt, but... He was a guest on the show. So, look at me over here. All right, cool, let's talk. Let, uh, when did you figure out that you wanted to play guitar? Um, when I first got it from Christmas. Oh, yes, I see. 
said the blind man. Now, the, let me let me ask you my your, my second question. Why do you want to play the guitar? Um, because I want to be in a band. Well, okay, now I'm going to get my third question. Why do you want to be in a band? Because you get to rock and roll. All right. Now, what about the girls? Though? They're stinky. Well, okay, that'll come later. That'll come <laughs> later. All right. Now, uh, so what kind of music is that you that you're liking mostly right now? The dan it dan it dan it dan it. It sounds like rock and roll to me. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? All right, right on. Now, uh, you started out with the acoustic guitar, but now you've since you've come into the store, you've kind of you've kind of discovered that you like the electric guitar too. Is that what you're saying? And and we have to upgrade and charge your parents a ton more money to get that electric guitar, right? No, no, we don't. We can we can spend a lot less. Okay. Then you want to spend as a potential rock star as opposed to your parents who we can help out, you know. But we're going to talk about a little bit like that right now, okay? And now uh, you're enjoying your lessons, right? How many lessons have you taken so far? Five. Five. And you look forward to every single one you've been taking down here, haven't you? And how old are you? Six. You're only six years old. So you hear that, germs? We got them down here six years old that are enjoying themselves and progressing as musicians because we do that in a way because I, I got a little one like that that's five and then I got the 13 year old daughter who is also five years old and then, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> girls are icky. All right, now, uh, so we want to talk a little bit about a little guitar. Where was that little guitar we were jamming on a minute ago? In here. Is it back there still? Let's go back and check it out, come on. Follow me. Ah. All right, I'm all right, all right, I'm all right. You all right? Are you all right? No. I'm not either, that's what they say. All right, so, so this is the guitar that you like, right? That's probably, that's a little bomber. All right, you can look around. This is the Jimi Hendrix room here down at the, down at the shop. I've been kind of putting up a lot of pictures of Jimi Hendrix because a friend of mine gave me a bunch of uh, magazines. If you want any old uh, uh, guitar magazines, we have them down here. They're only $2 each, and they span from like 1968 on up to today. So, I mean, we got hundreds of them down here, and they're only $2 each. Okay? Whoa. All right, first off. Let's tune this up a little about this guitar. It's the right size, but it's not the right price. Because it has this name on here. Don't even t talk about the name. We gotta blur the name out. <laughs> I don't wanna really put down that brand, that brand name because it's the brand of Jimi Hendrix, okay? It's the brand of Jimi Hendrix. But it used to be my brand, but I don't play Fenders anymore. Oh, I said it! I said it! I didn't want to say it, but I said it. You know why I don't do that? Because they're too expensive. All right? Now I'm playing Hagstrom's because they're one-third the price and they're three times the guitar. But I don't have a little Hagstrom to sell this kid, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to look for something else and we're going to make it right. Let's turn it down so you don't want to blow your ears out. You're right. You like that stuff? He likes that, man. He's crazy. Get the, get, get the look at his face, man. It's like... How about some let's up? 
tuned open now, so all I want you is just start start weighing on it, alright? Start weighing on it. Do that. Do it. Do it to it. Whatever I want. Whatever you want. Here. Here, use that. Just start slamming it. Here, just start slamming it. Woo! Yeah, do that. Do the pit. I'm going to show you something. It's called the pit straight. It is, it is a little scary. See, this kid's only six years old. I can do it in pick scripts. Do it one more time. part of the installment of uh, how to buy a saxophone and more music. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about right now is this little thing right here. It's called a Selmer Bundy 2. All right? It's got the word Selmer on over here. It's got the word Bundy and then it's got the word 2 because it's a Selmer Bundy 2. And it's the most common damn saxophone that's ever been out there. I've sold more of these in and out the store all the time. They sell for used about 250 bucks. They sell new about $1,500. All right? And that's just too much. All right? Here's another one. Selmer. Bundy 2. Okay? This is the most popular little saxophone out there. This is probably what all you people got out there. It's... And if it's been played on and played on and played on and played on and played and played on 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 until it gets to where you can barely play it, right? Yeah. Right. It does all this clickety clack thing. It's making all sorts of noise. It's wore out. And then you gotta buy pads for it, all right? That costs. That costs as much money or more than the saxophones that I'm going to be selling, all right? My saxophones are on their way, too, all right? Here's an old, cheaper sax. This came from Indiana, all right? It's a Pan American. It's a big tenor sax, all right? From what I understand, it needs pads, even though blah de blah blah it's supposed to have pads when I got it, but most of the do that in. Alright? Here's this. This is Okay, this is the other most second most common saxophone ever made, alright? This one is an even more expensive than the Selmer Bundy 2. Boy, that's a cool name. Selmer Bundy 2. No, it's not. A Bundy 2? What kind of sax you got, man? Man, I got me a Selmer 
Bundy too. That's what I got. And they're like, that sucks for you. But this is the second most stinky one. This is the Yamaha YAS 23. YAS 23, okay? This one's gonna cost you poor folks about $1,500 too that you're paying for it, all right? And then use it like five, 600 bucks. Blow on that thing and give me a couple notes out of it. It's kind of hard to get notes out of it, ain't it? It's kind of worn out. Let's try this one. Blah, 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 blah. I got things to show you. I got points to prove. You think I'm crazy? You think I'm, hey, S.A.? You think I'm loco, S.A.? Say it right. Better, right? Better? Much better. Much better. You know why it's better? You want me to tell you why it's better? Tell me why it's better. Because it's newer. All right, it ain't no much better than that thing. It just isn't worn out yet, okay? It's been played and played and played and played and played. Ten minutes. Ten minutes later, yeah. still been... It's played. It's overplayed, all right? But let's walk out it a little bit more. What's that one? Yeah, yeah. Like you went, you know I went. Yeah. Like that. But you know your second and third show will be a little bit better because you're gonna have a better musician than me. Well, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. This is the beginning of our one part right. show. Okay. This man can play. I don't he's like he ain't been playing that long, but we're talking about a beginner's instrument here. We're not talking about we're not talking about John Coltrane King or King of the Road. King of the Road. Grover. Well, well, Grover Washington Jr. But we are gonna be down the line. I'm gonna get my original sax player phone player in here. Actually, I got quite a few badass saxophone players. No, we're gonna be talking about my new saxophones that are gonna come out. They're gonna be here at his show on Tuesday, and those saxophones are called, they're called, Cecilio. Oh, yeah. Okay? So, and when they get here, you're not gonna believe the high quality of them, how easy they play, how cool they look, but not just how cool they look, but how easy they play. How quality there is quality. Right? Yeah, we'll check. Yeah, the price. How and the, the price, price the price is gonna be wholesale prices to the public. So instead of paying fifteen hundred dollars for the saxophone, you're gonna play half of that. Let me ask you a question. Is that why you're running for president because of the low prices that you can give? No, I'm running for president because I want to save the world. That's right. Okay. Saturdays, live at five, here at Morbius, 3100 A Henry Street. Wait. 3100 A Henry Street, Muskegon, Michigan, 49441. Email me at my email address, cartersguitars at yahoo.com. Call me, call me, call me on the phone. Call me on the phone at 231-737-ROCK. Let me answer this phone call and see who it is. Hello, is this Santa Claus? Santa Claus would what would what what do you think every boy and girl should get for Santa for Christmas next year here at More Music? Anything they want?